Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football. The Oregon Ducks strike again in the 2024 class. If you take a look at the teams, there's not many teams that have more traction and more momentum, not only in the transfer portal, but in the 2024 class than Dan Lanning and the Oregon Ducks. We've talked about this a lot. If Oregon fans were kind of concerned about the recruiting dropping after Mario Cristobal left, it doesn't look like they need to be concerned anymore because Dan Lanning is absolutely cooking. Dylan Gresham is a guy that I, I'm extremely excited to get into. I think kind of undervalued as a prospect that they're kind of checking out what he's about. But again, before we get into it, just want to say thank you to you guys, uh, especially the Oregon fans. Like the support you guys have shown truly does mean a lot. We've been talking a lot of Oregon football because they've been crushing it in the transfer portal, crushing it on the high school recruiting trail. So if you do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. I don't think it's slowing down anytime soon, so I have a feeling – We'll be talking a lot more Oregon football. So, again, appreciate all the support you guys have shown. Over 5,300 subscribers just truly means a lot to the fellas. Dylan Gresham, though, six foot, 175 pounds. I think he's kind of under the radar as a prospect because he's not necessarily the biggest. He's not necessarily the fastest. And when you look at what 24 7 sports kind of values and how they evaluate these prospects, verified track times and verified size and height. That's kind of what they kind of push towards. And if you have both of those, you're going to get pushed up boards. Dylan Gresham by no means is not a good athlete. He runs track, I believe, at 11-3 in the 100 meters, so good speed. The thing I like about most about Dylan Gresham is just the, the production he's had at the high school level. You take a look at what he's done and why teams like USC and Miami have thrown offers his way. 90 catches for 2,000 yards and 31 touchdowns in 2022 as a junior. That is a, a truly incredible numbers at the high school level. And then you take a look at the film and it matches up. Again, he's not a guy that's the biggest in the room. He's not a guy that's the fastest in the room. What I think is leading to all that production and why I think he's going to translate to the next level so smoothly is he gets the position of football. You're going to see this first play. One, he's phenomenal after the catch. Extremely hard to bring down. Very good at making people miss at the next level. But he's a guy that just – he knows where to sit it down and how to create separation. Right? You see a little zone coverage here. He just kind of understands where to sit it down be available to the quarterback and, and kind of make a play. And then after the catch, it's wraps. Like he is very, very good at making people miss. I said he doesn't have very like great track time. You watch the sport of football, like he looks like he flies. And the next play, like don't get me wrong. He's also a guy that can just straight up win vertically with his physicality and speed, right? Just absolutely dummies the cornerback and then just wins vertically with some good speed. And then the third play is kind of another thing I want to kind of mention is he's played in a, a variety of different spots on the field. So he understands how to create separation on the boundary. He also can play the slot. He's a guy that's been productive at all different positions and can do a lot. He's also played on the defensive side of the ball too. Checking out here, working from the slot. Again, you're going to see that understanding of how to create separation, where to sit it down instead of keep running to the boundary. And then after the catch, like you take a look at some of the most important things that I look for in wide receivers coming to the college level. Being good after the catch. like you, The college offenses are trying to get the ball out of their hands fast and try to get it into playmakers' hands and speed. If you are good after the catch, I really think your game translates to the next level. Now, I do want to talk about – well, we could kind of switch around and just talk about that. I mean, Dylan Gresham's a guy that you see on three. They love him. They had 213th prospect, one of the best wide receivers in the country. So kind of a – um a wide variety of rankings on this kid. Obviously, Dan Lanning and his staff really liked him, and they go out and get him. But let's take a look at this. what this 2024 class can be. This is the 14th commit of this class, and you take a look at where what they're doing. You have your quarterback. You have two quarterbacks, Michael Van Buren and Luke Moga, but you have a ton of other talent that is, that is big time. Bonafide blue chips. I believe their blue chip rating – they have twice as many blue chips than the Pac-12 does in general. The other Pac-12 teams. So you look at teams trending up on the West Coast. It is the Oregon Ducks, and I don't even think they're done yet. Like you look at five-star edge rusher Elijah Rushing. Guys, we talked about yesterday when when the other commits came in. Elijah Rushing trending to Oregon. Brandon Baker, the the five-star tackle out of Modern Day, trending to Oregon. All those guys were on campus yesterday. It. They have the depth. They have the solid players. Now Oregon fans might say, hey, let's turn our attention to some of these per premier guys in this 2024 class. If Dan Landing turns the heat up on a guy like Elijah Rush, quite frankly, David Stone, Williams, Emwineri, those are two guys that are also like Oregon is in the running for. And 
I, I think the biggest pitch, and this is something we've talked about, is Dan Lanning is selling development. He's selling development and competing for championships. This team is always going to be solid, but you look at Dan Lanning's track record and putting guys out in the NFL, we talk about this all the time. That's what these guys want to do. NIL is something that is a, a meaningful part of the recruitment, but where these guys really want to go to is a place where they're going to hear their name called in the NFL draft. And Dan Lanning has a proven track record dating back to his days at Georgia of taking elite guys and putting them out in, in, into the NFL. I don't think it's going to be a, any different during his time at Oregon. And the next part is you talk about development, you talk about in-game coaching. That is kind of something Mario Cristobal fell short on. Like you, It wasn't rare to see Oregon consistently in the top eight in recruiting classes when Mario Cristobal was in Eugene, but it never really seemed like that talent was kind of being developed to the fullest extent. And the in-game coaching certainly was. And as much as I love Mario Cristobal, I think he's a phenomenal head coach. He, he's a guy that has not been the best in-game coacher. Dan Landing, that's a little different. Like Dan Landing has been the defensive coordinator of a national championship team. Just won 10 games for Oregon in his first year of being a head coach. I think it's proven track record. I think he's proving the ability to recruit. This Oregon team is extremely exciting and certainly trending in the right direction. Again, wanted to wrap this one up, but appreciate all the support you guys have shown. So if you do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel, and we'll talk to you all later.